Hey everyone, Ryan from Me Bike Escape, and in this video, we're reviewing the brand new Rad Power Bikes Rad City 5 Plus. So let's get into the review. Before we get into the walk around of the Rad Power Bikes Rad City 5 Plus, if you are looking to purchase a Rad City or any of the other electric bikes offered by Rad Power Bikes, please consider using the link in the description before you're making your purchase as it helps me continue to make videos like this one. Appreciate your support. I will also put links to our electric bike accessories list, our top e-bike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page where I track all the deals going on with the electric bike brands that I follow. And as I record this, we are very quickly approaching Black Friday and I will also put a link to our Black Friday post. I'll be doing a video about that as well. There are going to be some awesome deals on electric bikes. Rad Power Bikes has actually announced some of their deals and those are all linked within that post. Purchases made through links on those pages also help support me, so thanks in advance. With that, let's get into the walk around of the Rad City 5 Plus. You can see here we have the high step version, though I think as you watch the third person riding footage, you'll get a sense of just how accessible the high step model still is. So be sure to check out Rad Power Bikes section of their website where they go through all the geometry. You can look at your height range and see what bike that they would recommend. But this high step model is still pretty accessible, though if you are on the shorter side, that low step model is going to be super accessible. In fact, if you are looking at Rad Power Bikes lineup and you are on the shorter end, the two electric bikes that I view as most accessible are gonna be the Rad City 5 Plus step through as well as the Rad Mini step through. Definitely gonna be more comfortable for shorter riders. Let's start up here in the front of the bike. So we have 27 and a half by two inch wide tires. Now this is Rad Power Bike's most efficient model with these narrower tires. So if you're looking to get maximum range, this is definitely the model that you wanna look at. Obviously this is the city oriented bike that they offer. Now, one of the nice things with these tires, you do get the reflective sidewalls, definitely going to increase visibility at night. And there's just a few accents around the bike. You can see that there's a little sticker here by the valve here, indicating that this is indeed a plus model. And the other way you can know that is the hydraulic disc brake. So the hydraulic disc brakes at time of recording now come on two of their electric bikes. Obviously the Rad City 5 Plus and also the Rad Rover 6 Plus. And so you have 180 millimeter rotors here. Definitely a step up from the 160 that you also see. I actually find that these brakes stop very well. I've been really happy with them. That's a definite upgrade if you're comparing some of these electric bikes, mechanical versus hydraulic. I definitely prefer hydraulic. Much easier to maintain, a little less finicky compared to mechanical. And you can see these fenders hug the tire very nicely. It's actually in its lowest position there. So these fenders fit really nicely. You will need to install the front fender. And you can see here, this is where the fender attaches. They include this hardware. If you're looking at this bike and you want a full assembly video, I will link our video that we did assembling this electric bike in the top right hand corner of your screen. And there's a flap on the back. These are Full coverage fenders really like these, of course, if you are commuting in this electric bike. Up front, we have the integrated front light that has come on the Rad Power Bikes models now for a fair bit of time. This light has two different components. Obviously, the ring around the side, which is going to allow you to be seen a little bit better, and then a more centered beam as well. 
This light actually looks pretty nice at night as far as being seen. Of course, if you are commuting very frequently, I like the rechargeable lights that blink during the day to be visible. And of course at night, perhaps a wider beam that's going to help with your commuting if you're doing it at night or doing lots of traveling at night on your electric bike. And the Rad City does come with front suspension, which is really nice. This is actually RST branded. I'll go ahead and give you a good look at how this suspension performs by pushing down on it. So this is what you can expect from that front suspension. Definitely feels pretty good and of course going to give you more comfort. Not a ton of travel here, but definitely prefer it to a rigid fork. Let's talk about the head tube here. You can see there are four bolts. If you're not already familiar with Rad Power Bikes, they sell a number of accessories that can be attached here. A front rack, you can get a small or large basket, and they do sell a basket that just bolts directly onto here, so you only need one accessory that's a little bit more affordable, but really like those accessory options. And Rad Power Bikes also has a logo up here, just an R. Here's the cable management, and Rad actually opts to zip tie these together and they don't include a wrap. I think that can really clean things up if you're looking for a project and make your electric bike look a little bit cleaner. That's definitely something I would consider. You can see they do have the dongle here. So there is no USB port, but you can buy an accessory which puts a USB port right here or back at the seat tube right there. So two attachment points. I'll be featuring that in a future accessory video on the Plus models. So let's move on to the cockpit here. So this model comes with nut hydraulic disc brakes. Now this might not be the exact hydraulic disc brakes that you get on your Rad City if you end up purchasing it because of course the current part shortage, companies are having to swap out parts. But just note when companies do this, they are putting an equal component in. They're not gonna downgrade you. So just something to keep in mind though if your brakes don't look exactly like this one. We have the faux leather grips. Those come on all of the Rad Power Bikes. Now these grips aren't locking. If you're looking for locking grips, I really recommend the ones from Ergon. I did a video on that and they do work with the right hand twist throttle. All right, continuing on the left side here, you can see they continue to include a bell. Perhaps not quite as good as the bell that they have integrated into the levers on some of the other models, but Nice nonetheless that they include it. This is a cell phone mount that we use. If you are curious about that, you can check out our electric bike accessories list. I'll go ahead and turn on the LCD displays. So this is new with the plus models. You can see it actually spells rad when you power it up. And so on the left side, you have your pedal assist one through five and zero, if you don't want any assist. You of course have a dedicated button now for your light, really like that. And of course the Orange button is your power button. You can get into the advanced settings here, which I actually talk about a little bit later in this video, so I'm not gonna touch on it again here. You can override this. I did a separate video on that, and I also do it in the first person riding footage. But generally, I really like having the dual display. I think it makes sense to be able to see the different pedal assist levels that you're in right where you change it, so I think that's a little bit more user-friendly. And then they also have this small, center mounted LCD screen. This one does go a little bit brighter, which I do like. So the nice thing about this display is it does give you your time and then your odometer top right hand corner, your current speed, and then you also have the wattage. I'll go ahead and hit the throttle so you can get a sense of what this display looks like. So you can see the wattage down there in the bottom. And the only other functionality that you can get if I hold the plus and minus pedal assist button at the same time, you're going to get trip time as well as trip odometer. So those are nice functions to have as well. Moving on to the right side, this is another perfect example of the part shortage. So historically, Rad Power Bikes has included Shimano components, Shimano Altus derailleur, and with this bike, they're going with micro shift. Now I have been riding this a little bit. This is a nice trigger shifter, and they click a little bit more. Not that that's a good or bad thing. But very happy with the shifter. I actually prefer the trigger shifters as opposed to those big thumb shifters. And then on the right side, you have that right hand twist grip throttle that I do prefer over the thumb throttles, although of course that is user preference. Red Power Bikes has twist throttles on all of their models. Now, a couple of things that I wanted to point out here as far as comfort goes, you can hopefully get a sense of the 
swept back bars that the Rad City comes with. Really like that. You'll be able to tell again in the third person riding footage what kind of position this puts me in personally. And it's very comfortable. And I think a lot of people are going to like this. And to go along with those swept back handlebars, you also get this adjustable stem. And you can see where we have it kind of set there. That's actually pretty comfortable for me. You can go a little bit taller, although I would not recommend going all the way up with it. And you can also see kind of the height that you also get from the stem, which is really nice. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the 14 amp hour battery. So new on the Plus models is this 14 amp hour battery, same size as most of the other models, although it is now semi-integrated into the frame. Much easier to hold, much easier to remove. I have been really enjoying this battery pack. It has 10 indicators here for your battery. Of course, here is the charger underneath that cap. And I do have the keys in here, but you do not need to ride with the keys in. Pops out very nicely. Plenty of clearance to pop it out even in the high step model. And Rad Power Bikes does sell a terminal cover that you can purchase. I believe it's $5 and you can put that in there. I would highly recommend purchasing that if you're gonna be trailering your electric bike. So there's a closer look at this battery pack. And of course it is a much cleaner look as well. And to put the battery back, simply put the back end in first and simply push from the top. And while we're down here, let's just look a little bit at this paint job. Looks really sharp, black and gray, and of course, rad power bikes. And there are a few other accents on the Plus models as well. You can see the orange up there as well. And they do show that this is the Rad City 5 Plus model down by that C2. Let's talk about these pedals. Now, I am used to the Welgo pedals that come on all of the other Rad Power Bikes, at least that I'm aware of. So this is a different brand. I'm actually not sure what the exact brand is. It does say K370 here, but they feel pretty similar to the Welgo pedals. I'm not sure if this is also related to the part shortage or perhaps they are changing to these pedals overall with their lineup. But one of the nice things is of course that kickstand is mounted towards the rear of the bike. And even in the grass here, the bike is not going to tip over. And if you are moving this electric bike around, you don't have to worry about that kickstand coming in contact with the pedals. There's a look at the hydraulic disc brakes here in the rear. And one thing that is worth mentioning compared to the other Rad Power Bikes, the non-plus models. So now they're having the motor cable actually come in from the left side and it actually attaches between the disc rotor and the dropouts. If you can see that cable right there. So I really like that that cable is much more protected than coming in on the right side of the bike, which is very common on many other brands. And there is that 750 watt peak new motor that Rad Power Bikes has put into the Rad City 5 Plus model, replacing the direct drive motors that were in the previous iterations of the Rad City that actually had regenerative braking. And so you'll get a sense in the hill climb how powerful this motor is, but there's a closer look at it. In the rear here, you have 11 to 34 tooth freewheel. And I really like having that 11 tooth in that highest gear because it's going to allow you to pedal much easier at those higher speeds. As I mentioned earlier, this is using micro shift components. So we have the Mizzou micro shift derailleur. This actually came, if you watch our assembly video, this came almost perfectly tuned, didn't have to make many adjustments at all. So I'm actually pretty impressed with the micro shift derailleur. I definitely think it's a good choice for rad power bikes. And you do have a derailleur guard here as well. And on the chain stay, Rad Power Bikes includes this Velcro cover. That's of course going to protect this nice looking frame from any chain slap. Up front, you have a 46 tooth double walled chain ring. Really like that. That's going to of course help keep your pants from getting greasy and of course protect the cogs as well. If you were to perhaps hit something, and one of the things I really like about the Rad City 5 Plus is that it comes with this super solid rear rack. It's pre-installed as is that plastic fender. And it does have a 59 and a half pound capacity. That's a little bit more than I see on many rear racks. Actually, it's usually 25 kilograms. 
And one of the cool things with Rad Power Bikes, with their Rad Wagon, and I believe with the Rad Runner as well, is they have the Thule Yep Maxi seat window here. We actually use this a ton on our Rad Wagon. If you buy that seat, it simply clicks in here. No other accessories needed. And of course, with that almost 60 pound max, that's going to be plenty of capacity. There is a integrated rear light and I actually have the lights off, but one of the nice things is it's gonna be difficult to see during the day, but when you pull the brake levers, that brake light does go on. And then if I do turn the lights on, it does go brighter when you hit the brakes. So definitely nice to have the rear light, although it's not super bright compared to some of the other lights that you can get that are rechargeable. So perhaps you could put a secondary light in here if you're going to be riding at dusk or at night. Let's talk about the seat quickly. It actually looks really nice. Rad Power Bikes branded. It does have a handle in it that's gonna help move the bike around if you need to in your garage, be able to grab the bike somewhere. And while I was riding this around, while it does feel a little bit more firm compared to some of the other saddles that come on electric bikes, I actually found that this was pretty comfortable. I'm not sure if that's just because it is wider, but I think this seat is adequate. Though if you want something more cushy, check out our electric bike accessories list. I have the most popular ones that I see people purchase listed. All right, that concludes the walk around. Let's get to some first person riding footage. I'll show you how this bike performs with throttle alone, go through the various pedal assist levels. I'll override it so it goes faster and then we'll do the hill climb test. So let's get to the first person riding footage. Okay, let's get started with the first person riding footage. I thought what I would do is maybe show you throttle only, go through the various pedal assist modes, and then I'll actually go and override the top speed. Uh, while Riad Power Bikes doesn't officially recommend you do this, I was able to find the setting. So just know that you're doing that at your own risk, but I think people will be curious how this bike performs overridden. So I will go ahead and do that after this first test. So right now, this is the way that the bike comes stock. So we're gonna go ahead and do throttle only. All right, and we have the GPS speed here with the speedometer app by Cool Nix. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the center display, the new LCD display that Rad's including on their Plus models. I do have the brightness turned all the way up on that, and you cannot change the brightness on the left-hand LCD screen, just so you are aware. All right, with that, let's go. Throttle only, three, two, one, here we go. Nice, easy takeoff. That's very common with Rad Power Bikes. There's 16, 17, 18, and there's 20. So class two electric bike with the throttle, 20 miles per hour, max speed. Pretty quick, but nice and smooth. And as I was just talking about, I feel like Rad's motors really are meant to be, or Rad Power Bikes just generally, a lot of their models are meant to be very accessible. They're not gonna jolt you, uh, gonna be really great for uh, beginner to hop on one of their electric bikes. Uh, nothing wrong with something more powerful if people want the power. Uh, that's just something that I've noticed riding so many of the Rad Power Bikes models. And of course, I should also mention the Rad City 5 Plus here has the new motor. So a new motor for Rad Power Bikes, 750 watt peak motor. And this is replacing the direct drive motors on the old Rad Cities and also the old Rad Wagon before the Rad Wagon for the actual, the 2018 Rad Wagon that we owned had that old direct drive motor. So I can certainly tell a difference with this motor. Um, but actually let's go ahead. I'm gonna turn pedal assist off and gonna pedal without any assistance. Uh, I get a qu this question quite a bit actually. Can you ride this bike if you happen to run out of battery? I think I'm in fifth gear right now putting in a little bit of effort, but nothing too crazy. One of the nice things, obviously, uh, compared to a fat tire electric bike, these tires are quite narrow, and so you're gonna be much more efficient on the road. Rad Power Bikes actually advertises this as their most efficient model. You're gonna get the longest range with the Rad City 5 Plus, and it's pretty easy to understand why. But I'm going leisurely paced now, I think, uh, 10 miles an hour, so. Not going to be anything too crazy. Hills will be a bit of a challenge uh, if you do run out of battery, but let's go ahead. 
I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn the pedal assist on here, pedal assist one here. Still in that same gear. We like to ride with our electric bikes in a high gear, and then we kind of play with the assist levels as needed. We like to use our bikes for getting a bit of a workout. So pedal assist one, I'm not working too hard here. Still in a fairly high gear, 10 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist two. Looks like 12 miles an hour. And again, very smooth power delivery between all of these pedal assist modes. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist three. I did see we were getting up to 13 there, so now we're getting up to 15. This is actually where I'd like to shift up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I think I could get into the seventh gear here. And pedal assist three, we're already hitting, we're getting very close to hitting the 20 mile an hour mark. And I'm still not working too terribly hard. So perhaps that's kind of demonstrates the power of this motor. It says I'm using about 360-ish watts. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist four, of course. That's gonna give us even more power. And we're going to definitely hit that 20 miles an hour a lot easier. Still feeling some resistance on the pedals, which I do like. And I just went into pedal assist five there. And this bike feels incredibly stable. Really, really like the ride feel on this bike. So hopefully that gives you a bit of idea of how the bike comes stock. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and override the speed setting. I did a separate video on this if you wanna check it out, but here's the easy instructions. I also have them written out on ebikeescape.com. So hold the pedal assist down button and the light button at the same time. You'll see a P on the left LCD screen and you can see on the, if you can see the screen here, it actually is showing me the uh, 12 hours. So you can go 12 or 24 and then the time and then the miles per hour and the brightness, which I already told you I changed. Now to get into the advanced settings, hold all three buttons, pedal assist up, down and light at the same time. You don't wanna hold that for about five seconds. And you can see that top speed is set at 32 kilometers an hour. Go ahead and turn that up to 40. Eight is the minimum. And I can get out of here with just hitting the power button here. And we should be good to go to hit a higher speed. I'll tell you exactly here in just a second. We'll do throttle only and uh, then I'll go to the various pedal assist modes as well. So here we go, throttle only, three, two, one, here we go. There's 15, 19, and there's 20. Still feel the motor giving me power. There's 22, 23, 24. I think 24 is going to be it. There's 25 for a second I saw. This is very flat, very smooth. It looks like 25 miles per hour is going to be the top speed. And I guess what might be interesting is doing this in the various pedal assist modes as well. I'm in pedal assist uh, one here. We kind of already know how that's going to go, but let me go into pedal assist three here. I'm actually getting closer to uh, 18, 19 there. Let's go ahead and go to pedal assist four. Again, very leisurely pace, not putting a ton of effort in, I would say. You can see 21, 22 already. All right, let's go into pedal assist five here. See how fast we can get. I'm guessing 25 is going to be it, but I'm gonna put as much effort in as I can, 25 miles an hour. That's gonna be the max speed. I'm working pretty hard. And yeah, I would say the gearing's pretty good. My legs aren't spinning too crazy, which I like. I don't like the motors that are almost too powerful for their own good and at the higher speeds obviously it's harder to get the gearing 
so your legs aren't just spinning around, not providing effort. That's something that's actually pretty common. All right, with that, let's get to the hill climb test and we'll see what the 750 watt motor can really do. All right, here we are at the hill that I test out all of our electric bikes. I actually thought I might give a shout out here to uh, Showers Pass for hooking me up with a bunch of winter riding gear. I live in Wisconsin and can get quite cold. So they kind of set me up with a bunch of gear that I'll be really putting to the test this winter, especially as I have so many electric bikes in the queue to review. So thanks Shars Pass for uh, the support. And one of the things as I was riding over here, I was just thinking these are kind of mid-weight gloves. But what I really like is on the left-hand display, LCD display on the Rad Power Bikes, these buttons are quite large. And so I can easily hit these uh, with these gloves on, which is really nice. Definitely a, a feature that I personally like. And what I'm hoping with these gloves is to actually, when I'm riding in winter, is these will hopefully pair very well with pogies or bar mitts where you actually put your hands kind of in these bar mitts and uh, you still need to access, obviously, to the controls so you don't want something super bulky. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, let's get to the hill climb test. We'll put on the screen the specs of this hill so you can get an idea of just how steep it is because the GoPro just does not do justice. And one of the nice things is this is the hill that I take up all of our electric bikes on. So you can compare side to side if you watch multiple uh, reviews. And uh, Rad Power Bikes advertises this bike as climbing 40% faster or better uh, than the previous Rad City models that I was talking about with the direct drive motors. So this is a geared hub motor. So you lose the regen, but the regen, regen really isn't going to add a significant uh, amount of additional range anyway. And a lot of companies now just use uh, geared hub motors. There's not a whole lot out there, uh, at least that I've personally seen that are using regen. So you can see I still have the bike overridden. This is the throttle only test. So we'll see how it does. Uh, I'm fairly confident that this bike will get up it. We'll just see how fast uh, it can do it. The hill's just really starting now. And so hopefully this just gives you a little bit better idea of how this can tackle hills down to 13 miles an hour. That's kind of what I was uh, expecting from this bike. There's 11, it looks like, just for a second. I think 11, 12 is going to be the lowest speed on throttle alone, which is still pretty good. Of course, you're going to be pedaling uh, an electric bike up a hill. You'll save the battery, get a little bit of workout. But it's always good to showcase the power of these electric bikes. And certainly, if you live in a hilly area, you wanna make sure that the bike you buy is really gonna fit the terrain of where you live. And so we're almost at the top here and then I'll zip back down and uh, do it while pedaling. Give you a little bit different perspective as well. So yeah, 11, 12 miles an hour. So pretty good, about what I would expect. Of course, there's more powerful electric bikes And we're getting back up to 20 miles an hour or so. All right, with that, let's head back down the hill, go in the various pedal assist modes, do some shifting through the various gears. Okay, here we are at the bottom of the hill. I'm actually gonna just use the throttle to get started just a second, shift through the gears, get into first gear there. And I have to say, I was very much appreciating the brakes on the way down, the hydraulic brakes. I actually need to shift up a little bit here. Second gear, still in pedal assist one, eight miles an hour. Definitely getting a bit of a workout now that the hill has started. Let's go ahead and go to pedal assist two. And even here, I think I would prefer to go higher, pedal assist three. There we go, pedal assist three on the left. 
second gear. Definitely not going to go up this hill very fast, uh, but I'm also, you know, conserving some battery, eight miles an hour, and the pedaling is actually pretty easy right now. But let's go ahead and go to pedal assist four. We'll kind of see if I feel like I need to shift up. Going about nine miles an hour. I think I would, at least in the third gear here. There's 10 miles an hour. And even another gear. Let's go ahead and go into Pelsis 5. Definitely feel a little bit in Pelsis 5. Now we're getting up there, 14. I feel like I could even shift up if I still wanted to get a bit of a workout. So yeah, 15 miles an hour, and I'm not working too terribly hard right now. I'm in seventh gear, definitely feeling some resistance there. So yeah, hopefully that gives you a good idea. If you're wondering about hills, with the different gears, definitely think you could go in a high pedal assist level first gear and provide very minimal. Obviously this goes up the hill and throttle alone, but as I said, always good to conserve a little battery. All right, with that, let's get to some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Rad City 5 Plus. The Rad City 5 Plus is currently priced at $17.99. It is the second plus model in the Rad Power Bikes lineup. The first being, of course, the Rad Rover 6 Plus. Check out our review on that fat tire e-bike if you're curious. There's a lot to like about the new Rad City 5 Plus, but it's worth discussing where this fits into the Rad lineup. What's great about Rad Power Bikes is there is a model that fits every use case. Fat tire e-bikes are popular these days, but they aren't everyone's cup of tea. That's where the Rad City 5 Plus and the cheaper Rad Mission fill a void. They forego the larger, less efficient fat tires in exchange for thinner, more efficient tires. The Rad City 5 Plus will feel familiar to those who are used to more standard frames with perhaps a few niceties comfort-wise. What I like most about the newly designed Rad City 5 Plus is the frame design. Rad took extra care in making these bikes accessible. The high step model has a standover height of 30 inches and Rad notes it should work for riders 5 foot 4 to 6 foot 5. That's quite the range. For reference, I'm 6 feet tall and my wife is 5'5 five five, and she felt plenty comfortable hopping on and off this bike. And while the geometry on the high step model is great, it's really the step through where the Rad City 5 Plus really shines. Rad says it's good for riders between 4 feet 8 and 6 feet tall. It has a standover height of just 21 inches, meaning if you're not a confident rider or you just want something more accessible, it's hard to beat the Rad City 5 Plus step through. Speaking of the frame, one thing I forgot to call out in the walk around was the semi internally routed cables. Basically underneath the down tube there's a removable cover that keeps the cables looking clean. It's actually a really smart idea and should make maintenance down the line much more easy. Lastly, related to the frame, it's worth reiterating how nice this bike looks in person. And if the gray black isn't your preference, it also comes in a gloss white and gray. Even the rear rack is painted to match each frame. Besides the frame design, the adjustable stem and swept back bars add to the comfort. So while this bike is touted as a city bike, it certainly has some aspects of a comfortable cruiser. Speaking of accessibility, the 750 watt motor is plenty powerful and Rad's programming of the motor makes it great for those new to e-bikes. Sure, there are other more powerful e-bikes than this at cheaper prices, but the reality is that most people buying e-bikes today haven't stepped foot on even a non-electric bike in years. There's something to be said about Rad making their bikes accessible for all, and even still, the Rad City had no problem in our hill climb test. With its thinner tires, the Rad City is the most efficient e-bike in the Rad fleet and should be good for between 25 and 50 miles with a 14 amp hour battery. Speaking of the battery, I've really been liking these semi-integrated batteries on the Plus models. 
The location makes them easy to grab and bring into charge, and I prefer them much more to the batteries that slide on and off. It's simply more user friendly. The hydraulic brakes feel amazing, and if you can swing the extra cost, it's definitely worth the upgrade. I like to point out the weights of e-bikes in my reviews, and the Rad City is no lightweight at 65 pounds, but still feels like a nimble ride, and my wife and I have really been enjoying the ride feel. Of course, with the Plus models, you get the improved displays as well. I'm a big fan of the Micro Shift shifter and derailleur. It feels well made and the shifting was smooth, though you might receive the Shimano thumb shifter depending on parts availability. Overall, I think the Rad City 5 Plus is priced really well for what you get. The fenders are great to have, but even better is the super sturdy rack with the Yep seat window. We pretty quickly threw our panniers on this e-bike for trips to the gym. If you want more storage options, you of course can add the optional front rack and baskets. The Rad City 5 Plus is an easy electric bike for me to recommend to someone looking for a full-size frame that doesn't have fat tires. The only thing I could find wrong with the bike is the lack of bottle cage bosses. Some might be frustrated that the USB port is no longer integrated into the new displays. For that, you'll have to buy a $29 dongle. Again, if you're looking to purchase a Rad Power Bike, I'd greatly appreciate it if you use the link in the description before making your purchase really helps us out and helps us continue to review new electric bikes like the Rad City 5 Plus. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.